Hi everyone, John Fisher here and welcome to another exciting episode of Eras, Epics, and History. I'm your host and I'm here to tell you more about the rich and wonderful culture that makes Ireland what it is today. Today we're going to discuss the Celts. Now, whenever anybody thinks of Ireland, they always think of Celtic culture. But just what do we truly know about these people that inhabited the land that we call Ireland today thousands of years ago? Well, I've been studying them in this book right here, Irish History, uh, from prehistoric times to the present day. And I've learned quite a bit, so let me share some insights I've learned. So the Celts originally came to Ireland from continental Europe around 500 BC. Uh, they actually, from that point, came in various fluxes. Uh, and they came from a region of continental Europe known as Gaul. Now Gaul refers to Celtic or Celtoid. I'll get more into that a bit later. But uh, there were two main tribes of Gauls that came over to Ireland between 500 BC and 500 AD. The first were the Halstad, who came from what is today modern day Austria. And they arrived first. And then around 200 BC, we start to see the Laten, another tribe another and more advanced tribe come um, over, and they came from what is today uh, modern day Switzerland. So uh, basically, Gaul uh, actually, like I said, had Gaul refers to Celtic or Celts or Celtoi. But interesting fact about the word um, about Gaul, is that not all Gauls were Celts. You'll notice that I said before, tribes. Tribes came over to Ireland. There were many different tribes of Gauls. And uh, for instance, the Iberians were a tribe that settled around Spain. And you had the Germans, which were in the, uh, which were in the Rhineland, uh, many of them in the lower Rhineland. But what's um, and I found this interesting. Apparently, the Greeks were considered Gauls, and there were actually a couple of Greeks who hailed from uh, who hailed from Marseille. <laughs> yeah, uh, completely crazy, I know, but but yes, it's true. But um, going back to Ireland, um, the Gauls contributed a lot to the culture of Ireland. Not you know, not just in terms of their uh, language, but also their structure, their uh, societal structures. Because of the, these Celtic Gauls who came over, Ireland uh, eventually was divided up into different provinces. The word for province in Irish is Cuig, and there were originally five provinces, which Cuig actually fits with because Cuig is Irish for five. <laughs> the provinces were Munster, Connacht, Ulster, and uh, Leinster. Now, those four provinces still exist today. They make up what is today modern day Ireland. The fifth was Meath. Now, um, I don't know exactly why Meath disappeared, but um, over time, it integrated and became part of the provinces surrounding it. What is interesting about the Irish language, <clears throat> what's interesting um, as we move into a discussion on the Irish language is that uh, when it came aimed to the Irish language, it's actually very similar to Scottish Gaelic and Manx. That's because uh, there were two types of Elts. There were the Q Celts who could not pronounce the letter P. So they either dropped it or they changed it to a Q. And um, Irish, Manx, which by the way is the lang native language of the Isle of Man, and Scottish Gaelic, 
are are descended from the uh, Q Celtic language. And then you have the P Celts, who make up uh, who spoke Breton, Cornish, and Welsh. Now, if you're you're a native Irish speaker, you can understand Scottish Gaelic very well because it's very similar to Irish, but you couldn't understand something like uh, Breton or Cornish or Welsh because, again, just very different languages, very different languages, although related, just very different languages that just evolved separately over 2,000 years. And... Uh, Fun fact, you can still find native Irish speakers and Scottish speakers today in Ireland, Scotland, of course, but also in Nova Scotia. <laughs> I guess that's, uh, that has to do with immigrants who came over from Scotland and Ireland uh, hundred over the, over the years. Manx, the last native speaker of Manx died in 1974, but you can still, but the language is still spoken on the Isle of Man. Um, if you really want to find a native Irish speaker, I suggest you travel to the Aran Islands. Uh, there are many native Irish speakers there, and some of whom only speak Irish, but uh, most know, uh, mo most, almost all know English as well. But, uh, <clears throat> but yes, I definitely recommend that. Then, now, going a bit more into the language, Basically, uh, the, Celt, the Celtic alphabet was known as Oam or Agam. And uh, it consisted of a number of inscriptions and notches that were uh, carved into the edge of stones. And uh, basically, it was about one to five perpendicular lines that either met or crisscrossed uh, across a center, a center edge that was chipped into the stones. But what's interesting about the word agam is that it can be used to refer, or oam, I should say. I believe that's how the Irish pronounce it. Oam actually, prefer, actually refers to an alphabet of 25 letters but it can also refer to the, it was also used to refer to a handwriting system used by the Druids, a calendar of 13 months, uh, 20 sacred trees that were said to have had the names of the letter, letters of the alphabet carved into them. And um, last but not least, it was actually uh, used as a, um, oh, it's not coming to me. Well, I'll come back to that if, if I find it. Another interesting fact is that um, most of what we know about the Celts was actually written by Christian historians. Yeah, uh, because the Celts actually kept no written records. And the, uh, the, sis the writing system they did have, you know, the notches that were carved into the stones, uh, usually it was used to describe to basically write out the names of people who had died. Uh, people would die, you would bury them, you'd put a stone over their grave, and then you'd make the little notches into that stone. Um, I just remembered what uh, the fifth use of oam refers to. Oam actually refers, also refers to a divination system that may or may not be related to uh, <laughs> to the alphabet, I know. Anyway, um, those are just some fun little facts that I've learned about the Celts, and uh, it's actually uh, it's actually been quite surprising. Um, if you like this video, please uh, please follow it, please share it. I um, am making a video each day for the month of March in honor of my Irish heritage, and because I just want to share with people. Uh, the rich culture and history of Ireland and how it's not just affected Ireland today, but also um, countries worldwide, countries worldwide where people who have links to Irish heritage, um, how the contributions of them and their ancestors who
came over to their native lands today contributed to various global societies. So uh, please keep following, keep watching, and uh, let me know if you have any questions or, uh, or notes or tips in the comments below. And actually, before I go, uh, I recently in my first video said that modern day Ireland consisted of one point of about 5.5 million people. And uh, that is because this book, it's, it's a bit outdated. It was written in 2007. And I got a comment that, set, that gave me the uh, current number, which is around 6.785 million. Uh, that is both Ireland and Northern Ireland. In Ireland, it's 4.9 million, and then in Northern Ireland, it's 1.885 million. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this episode. Um, join us tomorrow for uh, episode four. I will let you know then what we have in store. A bit of a surprise. So, um, thank you, and uh, have a good night.